Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install AppSmith using Kubernetes. I'm so excited for this video because I had to learn how to use Kubernetes to put it together. So I feel like I deserve a round of applause, guys. Come on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as you guys already know, there are so many ways to get a Kubernetes cluster up and running. You can go with a managed service or a self-managed service route. Managed services like using uh, GK from GCP, EKS from AWS, and AKS from Azure. Uh, or you could choose to self-manage yourself. Uh, you can install Minikube, MicroKTS, K3S, and run the whole show yourself. Because we want to make this video very generic, we're going to be going with the self-managed route. But let me know in the comment section if you want us to show you how to run um, AppSmith using Kubernetes, using any of the managed services I talked about earlier. GKE, AKS, EKS, just let me know in the comment section and we'll put out a future video showing you how this is done. So in today's video, I'm going to show you three main things. First, we'll start by installing K3S. This is the tool we'll be using to run our Kubernetes cluster. Then I'll show you how to install Helm, the package manager for Kubernetes. And lastly, we'll go on to install AppSmith using the whole cluster and setup we will be showing you in today's video something to have in mind is that you need to have enough storage space to run your cluster i initially tried setting up apps using kubernetes on a machine that has 8 gigs of space and it didn't work i had to increase it to 15 gigs and that actually worked so make sure you have enough storage space and enough ram ram of about 4 gb ram that should be okay so um, I want you to target 15 gigs of storage space and 4 gigs of RAM because we're going to be running a cluster and AppSmith inside of that cluster. So you need to have enough storage space and RAM. All right, without out of the way, let's get started. My name is Confident and I'm a developer at, at AppSmith. Without any delay, let us get started. All right, so as you can see here, um, I have already SSHed into the machine I'm going to be doing the installation on. Let's clear the screen so that we have more space. Oh, I'm disconnected, so I'll need to log in again. All right, now I'm back in, uh, so I'm going to clear the screen and then we can get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is install K3S. This is going to be the tool we'll use to manage our Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to paste in the installation script. It's a one-liner script. And for all of the commands I'll be using in this video, I'll have it linked in the description below so that you can go check it out and follow along. All right, so this is the installation script. We are making just one change to the installation configuration. We're setting the K3S Q config mode to 644. And what this does is that it tells the installer to create a config file through which kubectl, the actual tool we use to manage our Kubernetes cluster, can access the cluster. So um, this file is going to be created and it will have permissions to be read by everyone who has access to our machine. So that's all we're doing. If you want to lock down access, you might need to consult the docs so that you have your installation set up configured a little bit differently. But I'm just going to go ahead to run this. And this is going to download the um, K3S binary and do all of the setup that's needed to install K3S. And as you can see, K3S is installed. That was, that was really, really fast. So we can check if the installation went uh, properly by typing K3S-V and there we see the K3S version. And of course, K3S also comes bundled with kubectl. So we can do kubectl version. All right, and we have kubectl installed. So that was really, really straightforward. Now we have the cluster set up or the tools to actually set up the cluster installed. And we also have K3S, uh, rather we also have kubectl the tool we will use to interact with our cluster installed. So that's already done. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is install Helm. Helm is the package manager for installing apps built to run on Kubernetes. Um, we will need Helm to install AppSmith, so we need to install Helm in the first place. And of course, I have a one-liner command to show you how to do this. So let's clear the screen and I'm pasting in the command. Don't forget all of these commands will be linked below, so you can actually go check it out in the description below. So I'm going to run this. It's going to download the installation script and run it through bash. And here we have Helm installed. I can check this out by typing Helm version, 
and you can see we have helm installed so now that we have the tools for the cluster installed and we have helm installed we can actually go on to install AppSmith, and that is what we'll be taking a look at shortly all right so we have everything necessary to install AppSmith. let us go ahead to do that um the first thing i'm going to do is download the values file which will hold the configuration for our apps in setup um what i like to do is create a directory to store the values file so that we have everything neatly organized so let's create a directory appsmith all right and i'm going to cd into that directory and i'll run this call um, command to download the values file and paste it into the current directory and that's downloaded and if you open up the values file you see that it has all of the configuration for apps and setup so if you need to make changes to your setup of course you can go do that right here for this video i'm just going to leave everything as default and uh, we will roll with it so that looks good the next thing i'm going to do is add the appsmit registry to our local helm repository so let's do that i'm going to copy that command and paste it in here so this is going to be helm repo add appsmit and the url of our the appsmit registry that's done and of course now that this has been added we want to update our local repository so we're going to run helm repo update and that's done now we can go on to install appsmit but before that what we want to do is of course make our setup organized so we want to create a namespace where all of our apps need related objects will be stored and we'll be doing that using kubectl so this is going to be cube ctl uh, create namespace and we're going to call this namespace my apps meet. all right so we're going to call the namespace my apps meet. the namespace is created then we will go on to install AppSmit into that namespace using Helm. So I'm just going to copy this command and paste it in because you really don't want to watch me type this out. Uh, the command is actually quite straightforward. Helm install AppSmit. Uh, this is the AppSmit um, registry. And we want to have that installed into the AppSmit, the My AppSmit namespace we created um, just before. So I'm going to go ahead to run this and we run into an error. So if you take a look at the error message, it's saying the Kubernetes cluster is unreachable. It means kubectl can't access the Kubernetes cluster. That is because kubectl doesn't know where the files are. Remember we, we did a configuration recently to tell K3S to create a file such that kubectl reads that file and knows how to interact with our cluster. But kubectl doesn't know where that file is and as a result it can't reach our cluster so what we want to do is uh, just tell kubectl where to find that file and then it has all of the information necessary to actually interact with our cluster and create deployments and all whatnot so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an environment variable saved into my bash irc such that each time i log in kubectl knows where to find the file and of course the file is in the it's a folder rancher k3s k3s the yaml file so i'm going to have this saved into my bash rc and i will need to refresh my current session so that we have this variable accessible by kubectl so this will be source and i'm going to source my bash rc all right so that looks good i'm going to clear the screen and we will go on to uh, rerun the installation command. So Helm install AppSmith in the my AppSmith namespace. That looks good. So this is going to actually create the deployment for us. And as you can see, this is going to be under the my AppSmith namespace, which is exactly what we want. Now you notice that we have a couple of nodes generated and this nodes will help us figure out what the pod name is and uh, what the container pod is. Uh, but we really don't need this. All we need is just the pod name because what we want to do is to access our cluster We want to create a node pod service such that we have access to uh, the pod on our IP on the IP of the machine uh, So let's figure out what the pod name is and then we can use that to actually create the node pod service All right, so I am going to copy this over and paste this in so that we have access to the pod name variable. So I'm going to say echo, we want to echo pod name. 
and you can see that the name of my pod right now is appsmith-0 all right and of course you can also get the same information by doing kubectl get pods namespace my appsmith uh, you can see it's the exact same name right here. So you have various options to check the pod name just in case you forget it. All right, so now that that's done, what we want to do is create a node pod service so that we can actually access our cluster. And to do that, that's really easy. So I'm going to clear my screen and let's go do this. So this is going to be done using cube CTL. CTL, we want to create a I want to expose a pod, so this is going to be expose pod and then give it the name of the pod we want to expose. This is going to be appsmith-0 and we want to create a service, so let's give this service a name. So dash dash name is going to be appsmith svc and we want to tell it what port in the pod is this service running on so that it knows what to send or forward requests so this is port and this is going to be port 80 and then we want to tell it what type of service are we created creating so this is going to be dash dash type and the type of this service is node port all right and the last thing we want to do is we want to tell it what namespace to create this service in so this is going to be dash n and my appsmith all right so this looks good and we have our service created, which is exposing the absent zero pod. So what we want to do now is figure out what port is this service running on so that we can actually access our cluster using that port. Uh, to get the port, we want to describe the service. So this is going to be cube CTL describe service appsmith dash SVC. All right, so I, I forgot to add the namespace, so I'm just going to do dash n my appsmint. And we should have that information showing up right here. What you want to focus on is the node port part, which is this line right here. And this is telling you what port the service is running on. So I'm just going to copy the port because this is all I need. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to head to my browser so that we actually were able to uh, see if all of this setup works, right? Let's test it out. So here I have the IP address of my machine and I'm just going to add in that port and let's hit it and see if this works. All right, this is looking interesting. And we have apps meet on the browser running in Kubernetes. Of course, you can go in to set this up. Uh, let's see, I need to put in all of my details, my password. All right, uh, I'm going to say other and, of course, okay, let's just say uh, non-technical for now, just exploring. My password is not strong enough, okay, so let's make it that stronger. I'm going to leave all of this as default because I want to send usage data to AppSynit so that you can make the product better, of course and looks like we are good to go. All right, so we are here in the editor and we have our cluster set up and everything is working really nicely. So this is actually how easy it is to set up AppSmith using Kubernetes. Of course, this is a very simple setup. You can actually have a multi-machine setup where you have a different machines serving as the control plane and multiple um, worker nodes you can actually have that but i can't show you that in this video because that's way above my pay grade so please stick with what you have today and just try to enjoy it so you guys can let me know in the comment section if you like me to make future videos showing you how to run apps meet on managed services so just let me know in the comment section and i'll keep an eye out for that all right, so that's the end of today's video. If you'd love to learn more, we made a video right here to show you how to upgrade to the business edition. That's a wonderful video made by none. So please go check it out to learn how to upgrade to the business edition with all of the cool features that are valuable. And also there's a video right here to show you how to deploy AppSmith using Docker. If you're not a Kubernetes fan like me, you can actually deploy apps using Docker. So go check out this video to see how to do it. All right, so till I see you next time, take care. Bye-bye.